Hey everybody, this is the fourth here. And in this video, I wanted to take a look at clipping in the digital audio workstation. So in this section of the tutorial, I've talked a decent amount about clipping and soft clipping. And essentially what I've said is that clipping is something that will occur when you exceed zero decibels when you're working with digital audio. And in many cases, this is true. But when you're working in a digital audio workstation, it's a little bit different. So if you remember from a previous video in the section of the tutorial, I looked at clipping a sine wave. And I mentioned that when you clip a sine wave, all of the amplitude values above the threshold of clipping, or zero decibels, will get flattened out. And that is what clipping is. And so it looks something like this. You know, it just gets a little bit more square. All of the amplitude values above a certain level are flattened and you get those harmonics added to the sound. But an interesting and possibly an important thing to note about the digital audio workstation is that you can go above zero decibels on your various mixer tracks without actually clipping. So you can see that if I were to push the sine wave above zero decibels, you don't hear any harmonics being added. And if I look at the oscilloscope, it maintains its pure sine wave shape. Yeah, it's not actually clipping at all. Whereas, you, know, you might kind of expect it to be a little bit more like this. But the reason you can actually go beyond zero decibels without clipping is because in the digital audio workstation, we are working with floating point audio. And it actually, you know, allows you to not clip when you exceed zero decibels. So in the digital audio workstation, there's really no harm in kind of pushing your independent signals into the red, um, as, as long as it's, you know, within reason. If you're doing something crazy, uh, I don't even know why you would be pushing it that hard, but you, know, you can kind of get issues if you're pushing it really, really hard. But if you're over zero by just a few decibels, you know, you're pretty much going to be fine as long as you aren't passing zero on the master. And you can see that I can even record in Edison. And yeah, you can see that it's going above here. But if I normalize it, it brings it back down and it's a pure sine wave with no distortion. And that's because it's recording in 32-bit floating point audio. And the only reason that it's a problem if you are clipping on the master or exceeding zero decibels on the master is because a lot of the digital sound drivers that your master track outputs to um, are not in 32-bit floating point audio. So it doesn't actually clip inside the digital audio workstation, but it clips when it is processed by your sound driver. So if I clip on the master, I will hear distortion but it's not because of the digital audio workstation, it's because of the sound driver. And I could actually export from the digital audio workstation while exceeding zero decibels. Uh, and if I export to 32-bit floating point audio, there won't be any distortion on that sound. Uh, the distortion will happen anytime I play it on something that is not 32-bit floating point audio but I could export the master track while it's exceeding zero decibels as a 32-bit floating point wave file and bring it back into the digital audio workstation and there won't be any distortion. So it, it's pretty cool, you know, it just kind of, it, it's just a really cool thing that you don't have to worry about clipping um, when you're working in the mixer. 
So, you know, I can have this sine wave be in the red here and not have a problem. And it, it just, you know, it's cool that you don't have to restrict yourself and, you know, worry a whole lot about not exceeding zero uh, decibels on your independent mixer tracks. Now, in most cases, you probably aren't going to exceed um, zero decibels anyway on independent mixer tracks if you are kind of giving yourself enough headroom on the master. But it, it's just something to know about. Uh, if you do happen to be pushing some random mixer track into the red, uh, it's, it's not going to be a problem as long as you aren't really pushing the master into the red. So hopefully that information is helpful, hopefully that's useful, hopefully that all made sense. And, you know, um, as always, I just, I recommend mixing with a decent amount of headroom. Just so that you don't have to worry about clipping on your sound driver, or pushing into a limiter, or whatever. Um, but it's nice to just not have to worry about clipping on independent mixer tracks.